Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades and welcome back to another video. So today what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the Keltec Sub 2000. Uh, this is a 9mm version. It takes the Glock 17 or Glock 22 mags. There's quite a few videos out there on this thing. Some YouTube creators really like it. Some YouTube creators really hate it. And there are some that are right down the middle of the road. So I picked one up. I thought it's a really neat platform. I've always thought it was kind of neat and I wanted to see what it was all about. So stay tuned, let's talk about the kel Sub 2000. Welcome back. So yeah, I've uh, I've always kind of wanted one of these and I finally went ahead and I pulled the pin and I picked one up. But before we talk about this, if you're liking this kind of content and you're liking what you see here on this channel, I would really appreciate you doing me the solid of hitting that like and subscribe button down below and ringing that notification bell so you get notified of upcoming videos. It's the only way I ever ask you support. It's the only thing I'm ever going to ask you to do for me. I'm never going to ask for money or anything like that. And it really does help the channel in the long run. So please go ahead and hit that button. I would really appreciate it. Uh, the Keltec Sub 2000, sometimes referred to as the Sub 2K. Um, when I first saw this thing, I thought it was kind of a novelty piece. I didn't think it really had any practical purpose or application. And, and so what's the big deal with this gun? Why, why do people gravitate towards something like this? Well, it's, it's one really simple concept and that is the gun folds up into an extremely small and neat storage i mean this thing is it's tiny you can actually fit it into a backpack so if i grab my backpack here uh, i've got a pocket in there i can easily stick it in my backpack and i can carry it and nobody knows i have it now i have a concealed weapon license and i can do this legally you might want to check the laws in your state before you do so but that is one of the reasons I picked this up. The other place that I found that this really fits good is in the pocket behind the uh, front seat of my pickup. It fits right into that pocket. This would be a great truck gun, personal protection gun, just for the fact that you can store this thing in a space that requires almost no space. And then you can open it up. You have a 16 inch barrel, nine millimeter at your beck and call for personal protection. Like I said, this particular model takes Glock 17 or Glock 22 mags. So you've got great ammunition capacity. It folds up into that really nice, neat little package. The sight folds away. It's just all one little piece. Now I do see you can buy uh, optics, optic mounts for this thing. I'm not going to do that here. I want something that is extremely portable and extremely easy to carry. And though they do make mounts that swivel out of the way so that you can still fold it up and all of that kind of business, I'm not gonna do it. This is going to be a personal protection piece for me and there is nothing wrong with using the iron sights to do just exactly that. So I'm not gonna do anything like that. I'm gonna keep this completely stock and use it for what it's intended for, personal protection in various situations. Now, where would I use this? This would be a really good backpacking gun. If you're a camper or you like to go hiking or things of that effect, it would be really nice to have one of these in the camp with you if you're in an area that maybe say has mountain lions or bears or something like that. Not that a nine millimeter is really adequate or suitable for dispatching an animal like that, but it's better than a sharp stick. You have 17 rounds. They are, it is semi-automatic in these magazines. They do drop out when they're empty. They fall right out, so there's quick magazine changes. And as many mags as you carry is how much ammunition you have for protecting yourself. That's why I would buy something like this. I would not buy this gun as your primary personal defense weapon. It's not what it's intended for. If I was looking for a primary personal defense weapon, I would certainly go a different route. Probably, if it was in the home, a pump action 12 gauge shotgun with a tactical uh, barrel on it, 18 and a quarter inch, something of that effect, 
for personal carry, it's obviously going to be a handgun of some sort. This does have a niche, but it is not to be your primary personal protection weapon. Like I said, it's better than a sharp stick if you're in a camping situation or if you need a truck gun or something like that. This would certainly be fitting that bill, but as a primary, not so much. Neat features about this, it's very light. It doesn't weigh hardly anything. I think the gun probably weighs about seven and a half pounds, somewhere in that vicinity. It's very, very lightweight. Uh, this is the, uh, the newer version. It does have a threaded barrel if you wanted to mount a suppressor to it. It does have a fully adjustable sight, front sight on it for elevation and windage. So that's kind of a nice option. It's, it is mostly plastic. You understand that when you get it. This is primarily made of plastic. The uh, safety on this gun, it's not in a great spot. The safety is up here, right here. And it's, it's really, you kind of got to move your thumb in kind of an awkward way to get to the safety to push it. I mean, it's, it's there. It's just not horribly intuitive. There are better places for it, but understanding they only had so much room to work with, it does suit the purpose. Another neat thing about this is when you do have the bolt open, you can see that it slides down this notch and then it has to get moved up into that notch to hold the bolt open. When the bolt is open, all it requires for you to load it is to put a magazine in, slap shut it or slap it, and it will shut the action and load its first round. This gun does not have last round hold open. It will not hold the bolt open when the last round is fired. The only way to do it is for you to manually hold it open, which brings me to another point. That spring for the bolt is heavy. It's really heavy, and you're going to have to practice a little bit, especially if you're not a very strong person, on how to load this thing and understand how to load it. You can see what I was doing was I kind of brace it on my, on my chest and with my forearm, and I'm a pretty big guy, and I have to pull pretty hard to get that bolt back to load it. So understand that that bolt spring is extraordinarily heavy. But the gun works. It actually shoots pretty doggone good and it functions well. I fired several magazines of ammunition through this thing. It hasn't failed yet. So, and it's, and I'm not firing anything special. A cellar and below uh, 115 grain full metal jacket ammo is what I fired out of this thing so far. And it's functioned it just fine and without issue. Uh, some of the things I don't like about the gun, the sighting plane is a little awkward. You can see here it's very, very straight all the way back and the sight is kind of low. So you kind of, you really have to scrunch down to find that sight. It's not like an AR where the sighting plane is much, much higher on your, and it's closer to your eye. You really have to scrunch down to find it. And you can see I've got the butt positioned pretty high on my shoulder to get it to the point where I actually can shoot it like that. But the recoil on this is manageable enough where that's really not a big deal. And you're not shooting competitions or anything with this. So even just training with it, yeah, it's going to be probably a little uncomfortable at first. But when your life is in, on the line and that's what you're using this thing for, you do what you got to do to make it work. The point is, is that this is very compact and it fits into a very small space. The other thing that I, I don't like about this, this is really uncomfortable for your cheek. Uh, when you place your cheek on here to shoot this gun, it's it's not horribly comfortable against your face to shoot it. Again, you're not shooting competition with this thing. You're not hunting with it. You, you have this thing for personal protection. My life depends on it. I need a gun for whatever reason. And I need it to be compact and fit into a small space. So it does it does have its downsides. Heavy buffer spring on it, not real comfortable on the cheek. Uh, buttstock placement has got to be altered so that you can actually sight, sight plane down the rifle correctly. But at the end of the day, for what it is and for its all intents and purposes, it does have a niche spot. Now, if you're buying something like this for your primary defense weapon, I would say don't because that's not what it's intended to be. It's intended to be compact, easily portable, and be a last resort if your life was depending on it. I would call this a survival gun is really what I would call it. Accuracy, it's not horribly bad. 
it's actually pretty decent in the accuracy department. Now, I didn't do any shot groups with it or anything like that or run it out to 100 yards to see what kind of a grouping I can get with it. That's not its purpose. But what I will tell you is that 50, 60 feet, a man-sized target has no chance. You're going to hit it. It's not going to be a problem. I did run this all the way out to 50 yards, and a man-sized target out to 50 yards is still not a problem. So if you're using this as a camping gun and you're using it for personal protection in that respect, it's certainly going to fit the bill and it's going to do what you're going to ask it to do. And it seems to be so far fairly reliable. I just really like the fact that it is so completely portable and that you can bring this pretty much anywhere you need it to be. And it's not a hindrance and it's not an inconvenience. Understand too that it's probably not really good for it that when it is folded up in the configuration like this to slam the bolt home uh, when it doesn't have the breech end of the barrel to hit against when it comes home. So when you store it, I would certainly probably store it with the bolt eased forward as such so you didn't have an accidental slamming of the bolt into the action when there's no barrel for it to end up against. That cannot be good for this action. This action is just a, a nylon polymer plastic after all. And if you do that too many times, I can only imagine it's probably going to fail. Now, like I said, I fired this gun a few times. Uh, several magazines have gone through it. It functioned everything I've sent through it without fail. Accuracy is reasonable for what the gun is. It's just not horribly comfortable to shoot. I would not call it a primary defense weapon and use it in limited spaces and in limited applications, have reasonable expectations for it. It's actually kind of fun to shoot, even though it is fairly uncomfortable, it's still a lot of fun to shoot. It, it just is, it's just, it's just really neat and it's just a neat piece and it's something that I've always wanted and storage of it obviously doesn't take up a whole lot of, a lot of room and it certainly isn't an inconvenience or a hindrance. So with all that being said, what do I think of the Caltech uh, Sub 2000 or Sub 2K? Uh, it's a novelty with a niche. Certainly isn't necessary. However, it's fun to have in your collection and in certain applications, it would be really handy to have around, especially in protection of your life. Like I said, at the end of the day, certainly better than a sharp stick and it's gonna get the job done, at least in my experience so far owning the rifle. It's, it's functioned flawlessly without issue. Now I'll keep shooting it and, and practicing with it and playing with it and using it. If I do end up seeing any malfunctions or failures or uh, see that I'm developing any uh, cracks or defects or anything like that, I'll certainly do a follow-up video, but I'm anticipating that that's not really going to be a problem at the end of the day. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up. Now, if you're liking this kind of content and you're liking these videos, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below. I would really appreciate it. It's the only way I'm ever going to ask you for support. With that, this is Ed from Jack of All Trades. As always, thank you for stopping by and we will see you on the next video.